This is Module 4, Enzyme Reactions, Kinetics, and Inhibitors. In this video, video 4-3, I'm going to be describing um, enzyme kinetics, basically how enzymes catalyze um, the increased rate of their reactions um, and what are the different factors that influence that. So the rate of a catalytic reaction is measured based on how much substrate for that enzyme is present in solution. And so here's our general equation for an enzymatic reaction. So this means enzyme plus its substrate is in equilibrium with the enzyme substrate complex. And so this is the when the enzyme is bound to its substrate in the active site. And then that yields <clears throat> enzyme and product. Note how enzyme returns to its original state here, but the substrate is transformed into a product. There are a couple of terms that we use to describe the kinetics of enzymatic reactions. So how we can measure how quickly or the rate a reaction will proceed to completion. And we can also measure um, um, its affinity for its substrate. And so for this part of this video and these reaction coordinates, this substrate concentration coordinate, concerns this part of the enzymatic equation, just the first part. And so initially I'm gonna be talking about this part here, enzyme plus substrate yielding enzyme substrate complex. That's what's being pictured in this chart here. And so what's happening here on these axes is that this is the substrate concentration. This is the reaction velocity. So how quickly the reaction is proceeding to the enzyme substrate complex. And so these kinds of charts will measure the affinity of an enzyme for binding its substrate and how quickly it will bind its substrate as a factor of substrate concentration. So this line right here is telling us how much, uh, or this, so this is telling us um, the speed of the enzyme substrate complex coming together. This value right here, Vmax, is the maximum velocity. This is the number, or this is the rate of the reaction when virtually all of the enzyme is present as enzyme substrate complex. And so Vmax represents all, uh, so this position on Vmax is basically saying all of the enzymes in this solution are bound to a substrate. And so this would be the end of this front reaction. Enzyme saturation refers to um, as you increase substrate concentration in here, there's a finite number of enzymes that can bind substrate. And so if there's lots of substrate in that solution, then all of your enzymes are gonna be bound up and you won't see the rate of the reaction increase any further. Why? Because all of the enzymes have bound substrate. And so there's no enzymes left to bind. And so the reaction cannot, um, the binding of enzyme to substrate will plateau. So the more you increase substrate concentration, the faster you reach maximum velocity or the saturation point, where all of the enzymes are saturated with substrate. For these reactions, enzyme concentration is held constant, so there's a finite amount of enzyme in this system. And with this, with these factors, this the enzyme binding a substrate creates a hyperbolic curve, much how myoglobin binds oxygen. So the enzyme becomes more and more saturated as you increase the amount of substrate concentration. So very quick, um, so substrates bind empty enzymes very quickly at first because there's lots of opportunity, lots of empty enzymes. As those enzymes fill up with substrate, the reaction slows down because there's less and less available enzyme for binding. So this is referring the, so comparing things like Vmax or the maximum, uh, the saturation point to, um, as a, as a function of substrate concentration is all referred to as enzyme kinetics. And so we can measure the affinity of an enzyme for its substrate as a, as a factor of, of Km. So what is Km? Km is equal to the substrate concentration at which velocity is half maximal. So what does that mean? Km refers to the amount of substrate required to fill half of the enzymes in that substrate. And so we have to look at the affinity of an enzyme for its substrate early on in the reaction um, at this stage, because if we look at it too late, we can't measure affinity because all enzymes are bound to substrate. And so we can't measure um, how quickly that, that actually occurs. And so we have to measure the affinity of an enzyme binding its substrate 
earlier on in that reaction when there's still enzyme available to bind. And so when we want to compare, um, maybe two, we want to compare two different enzymes' ability to bind a single substrate, you can put them on a chart like this and then compare their KMs. The lower the KM, the higher the affinity of the enzyme for binding. Why? Well, think of it, think back to the hemoglobin myoglobin lectures. The lower the KM, or the if you only need a tiny amount of substrate to fill half the enzymes in that solution, that means the enzymes are really good at binding that substrate. They bind it faster and you reach maximum velocity sooner. See how, how um, steep this slope is? You get there a lot sooner. Whereas if you needed more substrate to bind your half of your enzymes, so say we have a, a low affinity, that means the curve would change to look more follow my arrow like this. So it's not going to reach Vmax as quickly, and it's going to take more substrate to fill half of the available enzymes. And so we can measure enzyme affinity based on KM, the ability for that enzyme, how quickly that enzyme binds to, or how quickly that substrate binds to half the enzymes in that mixture. So again, just to reiterate, what is KM? KM is a substrate concentration. KM is coming from this axis here. This axis is substrate concentration. So KM is the substrate concentration at which half of the enzymes in your solution are occupied with substrate. So the units for KM are concentration. KM is a constant. It's a property of every enzyme, and it does not depend on enzyme concentration. So even if we reduced the amount of enzyme in solution, um, that's not going to change the KM or the affinity of the enzyme for binding a substrate. So it does not depend on enzyme concentration. KM is also inversely related to the affinity of an enzyme for its substrate. So if the enzyme is really good at binding substrate, the KM will be low. You don't need a lot of substrate around to encourage binding. If the enzyme has a low affinity for binding its substrate, the KM will be higher. You need more substrate around to encourage the enzyme to hang on to it. So let's put these two thoughts together. Here's another reaction curve. We have substrate concentration on the x-axis, and we have reaction velocity on the y-axis. And reaction velocity is often re referred to as v naught or v0, initial velocity, the speed of the reaction when it first begins. So E plus S to ES. We have Vmax here, so this is the saturation point. And so basically it would take this much substrate to fully saturate every enzyme in that solution. And so, and then here's our half Vmax. And so half Vmax is the velocity at which we reach the KM value. So if you had, so here this, this chart is telling you about one unit of enzyme. So this is enzyme concentration is one unit. And this is what the reaction coordinate looks like for one unit of enzyme. What if you were to drop the enzyme concentration by half? Based on what I just told you, what we would see is that KM should not change because it is not dependent on enzyme concentration as is depicted here. So if we drop the enzyme concentration by half, we won't see KM change. But how might that affect Vmax? How would the curve change? Here, this red line is demonstrating what the curve looks like if we were to drop the amount of enzyme in this reaction by half. Well, there's not as many enzymes to fill with substrate and therefore it will reach the saturation point much faster, by a factor of half, in fact. And so Vmax comes down by half. There's half the amount of enzyme, so it takes half the amount of time to saturate them. If enzyme concentration, if um, Vmax is coming down by half, then that means Vmax, or the half saturation point, is also going to come down by about half. And so if we were to look at this graph, here's our original one unit of enzyme. Half Vmax is right here. So if we find the half Vmax point and follow over, we can find the KM or the affinity of this enzyme binding its substrate. In this one, where we reduced the enzyme concentration by half. Our Vmax is here now. That means where's our half Vmax? That's going to be about halfway down, right? Half of the Vmax value. Follow that over to the substrate concentration. It's the same. And so what is this demonstrating to you? that KM is a constant. It's a fundamental property of the enzyme. 
And so it doesn't change if you change the enzyme concentration because it's an intrinsic character to the enzyme. So changing the enzyme concentration will not change, will not change its affinity. Changing the affinity of an enzyme for its substrate involves the use of an inhibiting molecule, which I'll talk about in the next video. But otherwise, KM is a constant number that will not change. It's an intrinsic property of the enzyme, just like any fundamental constant. Vmax, however, is not a constant, and it will change. That is dependent on the concentration of enzyme that you need to saturate. We can put all of this together and make some predictions. Um, based, uh, we can make predictions about enzyme affinity um, and calculate things like their affinity or the substrate concentration, uh, the effect of substrate concentration on enzyme kinetics using this equation, the Michaelis-Menten equation. It relates Vmax, Km, and substrate concentration to each other. So like the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, what the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is doing for like pH solutions, this equation is doing for enzyme reactions. We're not going to go through the complex derivation of this equation, but we can produce an equation that relates the affinity of the enzyme for binding its substrate to how quickly that reaction will occur, how fast enzyme will bind its substrate, to the saturation point, at which point all of the enzymes are bound to substrate, and then how increasing the amount of substrate will affect these different values. And so we can relate that with this Michaelis-Menten equation. We'll practice using that equation with the homework assignments and also during the problem set demos. Okay, I just wanna reiterate this point that we have to measure this and um, the speed at which an enzyme binds its substrate at the very beginning of the reaction of E plus S to ES. So again, we're still looking at this half of the equation. And we have to do it here. Um, the initial velocity is typically taken before 10% of the substrate is consumed, so only about a minute after the start of the reaction. We have to be really careful about this. We have to measure this early because as enzyme starts to bind substrate, once that happens, it's going to start creating product and then enzyme will be recycled. And so then we'll basically get enzyme binding a second or a third time, and that's going to complicate the results. So we have to measure, measure this early so that the reverse reaction where substrate falls off its enzyme or the very end of this reaction where enzyme is recycled because it's created a product, we, don't, we, can, take out of the, we can take those two situations out of the equation. So we can just measure the initial binding event of enzyme and substrate, not repeated binding events or events in which substrate falls off the enzyme and can't yet complete to make a product. So this minimizes complications <clears throat> associated with feedback inhibition as well. We'll come back to feedback inhibition later, but what this is referring to is when an enzyme binds a substrate and makes a product, sometimes that product can actually rebind the enzyme and slow down its ability to bind the substrate. So in some cases, a product can act like an enzyme inhibitor. And remember, I told you that some of these facts, like KM, the affinity of the enzyme to bind its substrate, is changes in the presence of an inhibitor. And so if we're trying to measure affinity for an enzyme, we don't want things like inhibitors changing our measurements. And so to reiterate, this has to happen very early on in the enzymatic reaction where we measure the velocity, where the line, the slope of the line has not yet started to plateau. Enzyme and substrate have not yet begun to make product an enzyme is not uh, binding substrate and then having substrate fall off to rebind a second time. Okay, so that's the front end of the equation. What about the back end of the equation? The back end of the equation I'm talking about is, what about ES to E plus P? How do we measure the rate of, so there's two things that we can consider when we're talking about enzymes, um, catalytic activity. We first have to be able to measure the affinity of the enzyme for binding its substrate in the first place, but then we also have to measure the ability of the enzyme to turn it into a product in that rate of that reaction. Some enzymes will bind their substrates very quickly, but then take a while to actually make product. Other enzymes will bind their substrates very slowly, but once they do, we'll make a product very quickly. And so we have to split this equation up so that we can measure the rates of this arrow and also this arrow to get a full picture of what this enzyme is doing.
So we just talked about the front end. Now let's talk about the back end, ES to P. This is explained by the catalytic constant, also referred to as the turnover number or K cat. And K cat describes how quickly an enzyme can turn ES, enzyme substrate complex, into <clears throat> E plus P or recycled enzyme and product. So K cat measures the rate at which an enzyme can turn a substrate into a product. KM will measure the rate at which an enzyme binds its substrate. This is also a rate constant, and so this is a fundamental property of the enzyme and will not change with changing enzyme concentration. It will change in the presence of inhibitors and things like that, but it will not change in the, um, it, it does not change if you change enzyme concentration. Okay, um, so the number of substrate, mole uh, so the KCAT refers to the number of substrate molecules that are turned over into a product by a single enzyme in a certain period of time. And so we measure KCAT as Vmax, a property of Vmax, because remember, Vmax is the point at which all enzymes are bound to substrate. And so we start there, we begin there. And then the ability for an enzyme to turn over product depends on how much enzyme is actually in there as a function of Vmax. And so because these two things are related to, to each other, and if Vmax, so say if we drop enzyme concentration, Vmax will also come down. If we increase enzyme concentration, Vmax will go up. And in both situations, Kcat will stay the same, right? Kcat's equal. All right. And so again, we'll play with Kcat with the homework and with the problem set demos. So now we figured out how quickly an enzyme will bind its substrate with Km. With KCAT, we can figure out how quickly an enzyme turns its bound substrate into product. And so now how do we look at both of those things together? The complete equation, stitch them together. This is referred to as catalytic efficiency, which represents the entire equation. How quickly an enzyme can bind a substrate and then convert that substrate to product. And so we relate these two terms to each other. So this is relating the ability of the enzyme substrate complex to make product to the ability of the enzyme to bind its substrate in the first place. And this is referred to as catalytic efficiency. Okay, so let's put these two, th let's put these concepts all together. KCAT or ES to P, KM or um, E plus S to ES, and KCAT and KM, the entire equation stitched together. We'll use an example to illustrate this point. Let's say we have one enzyme and it's able to bind three different substrates. Look how similar in structure um, they are, by the way. And so this enzyme is got an active site that's big enough to fit this ring structure inside. And so these three enzymes all fit in there, but they might fit with different affinities. Um, the enzyme's active site might have um, R groups that are better able to stabilize this substrate over maybe this one or this one but all three of them will get in there and bind and be turned into product. The rate at which that happens though, either binding its substrate or turning into the product will be different because the substrates are different. Okay, so here's substrate A. Its catalytic turnover rate, so its turnover number is listed here. The affinity for binding its enzyme is listed here. And this is the catalytic efficiency. So putting those two things together. KM is inversely related to its affinity. And so if we look at substrate A, B, and C, and we look at KM, the highest affinity substrate will be the lowest number. And so substrate B is really good at binding to the enzyme. It has the lowest KM. Substrate A is not that great at binding the enzyme. It has a very high KM. It takes more substrate in order to encourage the binding event to happen. And then this one is somewhere in between. So now let's look at the ability for these substrates to be turned into product by their enzyme. This happens very fast. So KCAT is turnover rate is very fast for substrate A and actually very slow for substrate C and substrate B somewhere in between. And so even though substrate A doesn't bind very well, it's, it's bad at binding the enzyme. It takes more substrate to actually encourage the binding event. Once it binds, it's very good at turning substrate A into a product. This one, it's really good at binding that substrate, substrate B. But once it binds, 
turning it into a product is a different game. It's a little bit harder to do that. And so we can sort of get the overall effectiveness of an enzyme for completing the reaction by looking at both of these terms together. And so which enzyme has the greatest catalytic efficiency? The one with the highest number. This one's 114. Let's look at this substrate. This substrate binds its enzyme with intermediate affinity, and it actually has a pretty high turnover rate. So it actually takes a while to turn this substrate into product, but because its affinity is so good, that actually makes it the most efficient enzyme. So which substrate yields the greatest affinity? That would be um, a low KM. So this has the highest affinity for binding. This one has the fastest, oh, I'm sorry. This one has the fastest turnover rate. Oh my goodness, I think I messed this up. Sorry about that. Slow, medium, fastest. And so KM is inversely proportional to affinity. So low KM, high affinity. That's not true for KCAT. The higher the KCAT, the better the turnover rate. I apologize for that error. Okay, so let's go through this again. Which substrate yields the greatest affinity? This one, the lowest KM. Which one has the fastest turnover rate? This one, it's really good at turning substrate into product. It's awesome at it. It's got the highest rate. And so which substrate yields the most efficient reaction overall? Substrate C, which binds with intermediate affinity, but once it binds, boy, it turns that substrate into product very, very fast. And so it's the most efficient enzyme.